hi guys oh my gosh i missed you <laughs> welcome back to my channel i miss making videos i'm sorry i've been a little m.i.a the last couple of weeks and my uploads have been really sporadic the last few weeks have been a huge time of adjustment and trying to get back into the groove of life in la after being in bali for over a month so yeah, it's been challenging, but thank you for your patience and I'm back and I'm so happy to be making videos and I'm so happy that you are here with me. If you're not already, make sure you hit the subscribe button. I have lots of really fun videos coming up. So in order to put like a bookend on my Bali videos, I thought it would be fun to do a little sit down chat, Bali recap and yoga teacher training recap with you because although I feel like I shared a lot of my trip through vlogs I didn't really get a chance to give you my overall thoughts and feelings on my trip And there are some things that maybe I didn't share or couldn't share Or didn't know at the time about my trip that I think It's worth sharing since I've been back so many people are asking me how was your trip how did it go what happened tell me what, about your trip and to be honest with you it's been really hard for me to put the trip into words it was the most transformative life-changing thing i've ever done for myself giving myself the gift of time and travel is something that i will be forever grateful for and i'm so glad that i did it and i'm so glad i did it now it was amazing and it, like i said it's hard for me to put into words it's hard for me to verbalize it because it's just something that has to be felt you know but really amazing and the trip brought up a lot of stuff that i had been repressing and a lot of emotions and things that I haven't dealt with that I thought maybe might come up but I wasn't totally anticipating but it ended up being really good even though it was challenging because they were things that I really needed to face and move through so that I could heal and move forward with my life so yeah Bali's just a magical place the energy there is amazing the culture is rooted in gratitude they have offerings that they put out every day and Everyone that I came into contact with was so friendly and so loving and kind and generous and um, Yeah, I just had the best experience I'm sure there's crappy people there just like there's crappy people everywhere, but my overall experience with the locals and people that I met was I, I'm just in love with the culture and the people it was really really beautiful Bali itself is really far from LA. <laughs> it was like I think a total of 30 hours of travel with a layover and two flights but it was so worth it and uh i would do it all again in a heartbeat i really would i actually didn't want to come home <laughs> i i was totally sad to come home i thought i would get more homesick than i got i got pretty homesick when i was actually sick sick because i felt like absolute crap and um I was out of my element didn't have my go-to places or things that i could pick up to make me feel better so that was a little difficult but other than that i really had the time of my life and mm, i just love bali i have a special place in my heart for bali and i cannot wait to go back i don't know in what capacity i'll be returning whether that's teaching or hosting retreats or just traveling but i will 100 percent go back to bali it's a magical magical place i I thought it would be fun, like I said, to kind of recap my trip and then recap my yoga teacher training. I wanted to kind of touch on some things that I wish I could have done differently or that I'll do differently next time. And also the things that I did that I'm really happy that I did and also answer some of your questions. I put up a little question box on my Instagram, which if you're not following me over there yet, what are you doing? follow me i'm at shayla quinn the link to my instagram is down in the description box below so make sure you follow me there i update every day it's really fun bali is magical have i said magical too many times that's just the only word i can think of to describe it it was definitely really difficult to adjust to such a slower pace of life it's an island and everyone is on island time you know especially on nusa limbongan which is where i did my yoga teacher training it's just a lot slower pace and it felt really good uh to slow down so i needed i needed that more than i 
even realized I needed it. The energy there is just different. I don't know if it's because I was on vacation, ish i mean the training i'll get into it but it was a lot more work than i thought uh but the energy was just so different it was so relaxed there was something very casual about it but very special we love bali the other thing that was really cool about my trip was i felt incredibly supported the entire time from the moment that i stepped off from the moment that i got to lax actually and began my journey there i felt so supported by every single person that I came into contact with and met. And that was a really beautiful thing. I, I wasn't necessarily nervous about going. Once I decide I'm doing something, I usually just kind of bypass any of the fears or the thoughts of what could go wrong. And I'm just like, okay, we're going. And I just go and do it. And then usually when I am in it, I'm like, whoa, we're doing it. Okay, we're here. <laughs> I just kind of like turn on autopilot and go. But before the trip, I did have some reservations about being gone for that long. And what if I didn't like it? And what if I get homesick? And I just moved into my new apartment. And I was like, oh, I'm sad to be leaving my new apartment. And yeah, some things came up. And I also thought about what is this trip going to bring out in me? This trip is going to be challenging. What if I'm uncomfortable? Oh, I hate being uncomfortable. Like all of these things. And I, like I said, felt so, so supported. I, I could easily say that my entire trip, I felt like I was crowd surfing. <laughs> Literally. I felt like I just was like, okay, we're in Bali. And every person was just like carrying me along, passing me to the next person, to the next place. And I just felt like, wow. Of course, the trip came with its challenges, but it was really simple in many ways too and, and easy and that was so so freaking cool yeah very very amazing and it, it was really good other than my bout with bali belly which i'll get into that later also if you don't know what bali belly is i'm just gonna spare you the gory details and just suggest that you pause this video open a new window google bali belly read the symptoms and then pop back over because I don't want to talk about it. It's, yeah, it's not cute. Other than my bout with Bali belly and the resistance that I felt in the beginning of the trip of things moving slower than I was used to, it was a really easy trip for me. I feel lucky. Also traveling that far alone is so freaking liberating and empowering. I was like, wow, this is so badass. Like, this is really far. I, I really did this. Like this is something that I've thought about for years and thought that it was really out of my reach because of how far it was and because of how different the culture was and et cetera, et cetera. And then finally getting there, I was like, wow, this is so freaking cool. I actually did it. There's nothing better than setting a goal for yourself or, you know, wanting to do something and then actually doing it and accomplishing it. It feels so good. There's also something so incredible about spending an extended amount of time in a totally different culture and in a totally different place. I grew up in Orange County and I've lived in LA for 11 years. So I've lived my whole life within, you know, 50 or 60 mile radius. And while I live and am from a very beautiful place, which I'm very grateful for, it's definitely a bubble, you know? It's very limited to how diverse it is here so i think being in indonesia was just really eye-opening to see how other people live and to meet new people and to experience something new was really incredible and has made me question how i live my life here and what's important to me and my priorities and all of that stuff i think traveling is so 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 good for you i wish i would have started traveling sooner in my life but you know no going back now more travel for me moving forward. <laughs> My yoga teacher training on Nusa Limbangan was awesome. Nusa Limbangan is a little island off of Bali. It's kind of near Nusa Penida. Bali is like so different from America to begin with. And then you have Nusa Limbangan and it's like <whistles> totally different. There's like one paved road that goes through the whole island. It's just a totally different way of life and it is really beautiful and much, much, much slower paced. And I'm really glad that I got to experience that. It was completely different than the way I live my life here. And it changed the way I viewed home and very eye-opening. 
and humbling. This is the first teacher training that I've done where I was able to fully focus. So I wasn't working full time. The other two trainings I did, I did them here in LA and I was working full time. So it was really nice to be able to fully focus on the training. The teachers were so, so, so great, so knowledgeable. The guest teachers were incredible and knowledgeable. I would highly recommend all yoga. I really had a great experience with them. The only thing that I would have done differently is I would have taken Bali belly and the possibility of dehydration a lot more serious and I would have planned better for that because it really affected my ability to focus and be present during the lectures in the afternoon and some of the practices because I was really dehydrated and my stomach was really messed up. Before leaving I brought like six packets of electrolytes thinking oh I might take one or two per week. No, I needed really one per day. I mean, not only is the weather different in Bali, it's really hot, it's humid. You're practicing twice a day. You're in trainings for 10 hours a day. You're jet lagged, you're sweating, you're working, you're focusing. It's a lot. And on top of that, if you happen to get Bali belly or a digestive issue while you're there, you're gonna easily become dehydrated. And some of the side effects of dehydration are just feeling really lethargic not being able to focus. I had a really hard time with it. The days are, were a lot longer than I anticipated and it was a lot more work than I anticipated. The training days are really rigorous. You start at 7.30 in the morning and so if you wanna grab a coffee before, you need to leave by seven. And if you wanna have time to get ready and or check emails, which is what I was doing in the morning, I was getting up at like 6 a.m. You go get a coffee, you get your water, you start training at 7.30. You do have a two hour break during the day, but then you're in training and in lectures and practicing until six or 6.30. And then they have this really fun thing called playground where they keep the shala open and you can work on inversions with the teachers or work on poses or practice teach or whatever it is that you wanna work on. So if you stay there, you're leaving maybe by 7 or 7.30, it's already been a 12 hour day. You go home or back to your room, you shower, then you have to walk and go eat somewhere and then work on your homework and before you know it, it's time to go to bed so that you can get up at 6 a.m. the next day and do it all over. So the days are, are really long and, and quite rigorous to be honest with you. I would have better prepared with a stronger probiotic and I would have brought electrolyte packets for every single day and I would have actually brought more snacks with me. I'm vegan and I did find vegan food on the island but I had a hard time finding like healthy vegan friendly snacks that I could bring with me to eat throughout my training day because you do get a two hour break for lunch during the day but you're walking everywhere. You're on an island so everyone's on island time so it takes like three times as long to get anything. And so by the time you go and you eat, it's time to walk back and start training again. So I didn't feel like I had a ton of time to grab proper snacks. And I was able to find like a lot of cashews and nuts and stuff like that. But after so many days of cashews as snacks, you're just kind of like, okay, I want something else. So I wish I would have brought more like go macro bars or protein bars or, like fruit, uh, dried fruit or fruit and nut mix or something like that, that would have been really helpful. And electrolyte packets. I would have started taking charcoal pills probably right away upon arrival. I think that would have helped my digestive issues as well. And yeah, that's basically the only thing I would have changed is just to support my body better so that it could have supported me better through the training. Oh, actually there's one more thing. This, and this has nothing to do with the training itself. The training had great curriculum, great teachers. It was great. I loved every second of it. However, you only get one day off a week. And because we are training so hard during the week, I really wish looking back, rather than packing that day off with adventuring, which I know it's, you wanna see the island, you wanna explore all that stuff. I think it would have been a better use of my time to just like chill and rest and relax because it just got harder as the weeks went on for me to feel motivated to keep working because I was really tired. So I think, yeah, I would have opted to not go on the group excursions that they had planned. It just wasn't really my vibe or my speed. And it was a little exhausting to be adventuring on days off, especially when you're training 10 hours a day, six days a week, I think I would have just 
like chilled and relaxed so that I felt really rejuvenated for the next week of training. Yeah, I love the training. It was so great. And again, I highly recommend. One thing I got asked a lot about is accommodations on this island. Mm. Where do I begin? I booked a hotel prior to going for the entire time of the training. And I, the reason I booked this hotel was because I thought that it looked like it wasn't like five star, the nicest hotel, but it, I de decided not to stay in the, um, it's not a hostel, but it was like a group accommodation that came with the training where you're kind of like in bunk beds with everyone. And I, I live alone, I work alone, I'm independent, I like my alone time. So I decided prior to going that I would prefer to have my own space so that I can just like chill out and not not have anyone in my personal space so i booked a hotel prior which wasn't the worst place and apparently it was actually pretty good according to some of my other yoga teacher trainer friends that were staying in different places but it wasn't the best and in there were some issues we had some mold issues from the from the um ac unit on the ceiling which then well the first room we were given didn't have a lock on the door which no, not, not staying in a room without a lock. Well, then they moved us, and then a week into staying in that room, there was mold on the ceiling from the AC unit running, and we're like, okay, this is not safe. <laughs> so we moved again, and then the third room we got was not good. There was some sort of sewage issue happening. <laughs> and, and, and while it was staying in different accommodations and I'm used to living in here was really good for me. Not that I'm, I'm not a diva by any means, but it, it was good because it made me really appreciate the comforts of my home and the beautiful home that I've created. But yeah, I think accommodations are, it's really important to find a place that you feel really comfortable in that has AC, make sure there's Wi-Fi. make sure that you get hot water in the shower. Like you wanna take a hot shower at the end of your day. You wanna be able to lay down in the AC on your break at lunch. You know, you wanna feel comfortable because this training is a lot of work. It's a lot of information. You're training for really long hours and it's worth it to feel comfortable. Laura and I ended up moving hotels for the last four nights and that was so awesome that we were able to do that because we felt like we were roughing it for the first two and a half weeks and we hit a limit where we were like, I can't take this anymore. So, but there are lots of accommodation options on Nusa Limbangan and I would just check out the ones that All Yoga recommends and then also maybe read the reviews online of the place before you book it. And also I had some friends that actually only booked a few nights at one place and then once they got there, they went around and looked at the different places and that was, prob that was probably a really good idea of them. Laura and I were a little worried about not having a place to stay and so we went ahead and just booked three weeks at the same place. Kind of like the other people's idea of booking a couple nights and then taking a look and seeing what else is around there. So yeah, that's the accommodation situation. The accommodations in Bali were amazing and I got so many questions about the villa that we stayed in in Changu. It was rented through Airbnb. So def definitely check out Airbnb. They have some really amazing places. So things I would have done differently. Numero uno, I would have taken Bali Belly and dehydration more seriously. I would have brought a stronger probiotic, I would have brought electrolyte packets, and I would have started taking charcoal pills right away. Bali Belly is a real thing, you guys, and it's not pretty. It's not pretty and there's nothing worse than being all the way across the world and feeling like absolute crap the other thing i would have done differently is i would have gotten a shorter layover on the way there on the way there i had a five hour layover in sydney australia and i wish i would have either had a shorter layover so that i wasn't sitting around the airport for five hours or maybe i would have had a longer layover so i could have actually left the airport to explore a little bit five hours it was just too short to go out and do anything but too long to where i started getting really grumpy at the end of it the other thing i would have done differently is i would not have tried to pack everything into one suitcase i don't know why but i had it in my head that it was super extra to bring two suitcases for a month 
and I was really hell-bent on getting everything in one suitcase and then I ended up buying an extra suitcase while I was there to bring stuff back with me. So, don't worry about being extra. Bring an extra suitcase. You're gonna wanna shop. You're gonna wanna pick up gifts for people. Bring the extra suitcase. Who cares what anybody else thinks? Speaking of packing, I already mentioned this earlier, but I would have packed more vegan-friendly snacks. If you don't have any dietary restrictions, then you're totally cool. For me, being vegan and trying to be mindful about being gluten-free and, you know, health conscious, I wish I would have brought more snacks for myself for throughout my trip. I definitely had the plain snacks down on lock, but I wish I could have brought more for my trip and through my training that would have made it a lot easier. I also would have packed more clothes. There is laundry available on Noosa Limbongan, but I have to be honest, they lost about five or six pairs of my underwear and my clothes smell funky coming back. So yeah, I would have just packed enough clothes to wear the whole time. I know that seems really excessive, but I wasn't crazy about the laundry services available and the fact that they lost my underwear. Things I was really happy that I did on this trip. I'm so happy that I arranged for airport pickup through the hotel that I stayed at the first night that I got to Bali. I stayed in Sonur Beach and I stayed at the Prime Plaza Hotel and I arranged prior to my arrival for there to be somebody to pick me up from the airport and it was such a relief knowing that I had someone reliable waiting at the airport for me with a sign with my name and I knew that, that it was reputable and safe and it just took the pressure off of me upon arriving of being like, okay, I know I can trust him I know where we're going rather than trying to find a taxi and not knowing and not having a phone that works and all this other stuff that was so smart and it really wasn't even that expensive and i'm so glad i did that speaking of expenses i'm so happy that i brought cash with me and changed it at the airport that made it really easy to just have cash on hand i didn't have to keep going to the atm and taking cash out i mean i did end up going to the atm but i took a good amount of cash with me i kind of was able to budget my money for food and extra stuff before going and decided, okay, I'm gonna take X amount of cash and I just exchanged it at a really decent rate at the airport and that was really great as well. Speaking of doing things at the airport, instead of spending tons of money on a travel plan for your cell phone, just get a SIM card at the airport. It is so easy and I'm so glad. I actually didn't end up getting one at the airport because my Balinese friend Hart had one waiting for me at the hotel, which is, <gasps> still can't believe how nice she was to me. That's what I'm talking about, spiritual crowd surfing. Like that, that was just so nice. But anyway, the SIM card thing was so great because you could easily load, load it up with however much money you wanted and then your phone worked. And I'm so glad I did that because it made getting around and using my map and using my internet so easy and it was so much more affordable rather than paying Verizon like a million dollars to only be charged extra roaming charges and blah 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 so that was that was a really good move i'm also so glad that i gave myself an extra week in bali after my training to chill and relax and explore if i had had to have gone home straight after that training i think i would have accidentally missed my flight <laughs> that training was way more work than i thought it was gonna be i was exhausted and i'm so glad i had an extra week to relax and decompress from the training i honestly could have used an extra extra week like two weeks yeah i would have done that i would have given myself two weeks but anyway extra time after training it's a vibe okay answering your questions from Instagram. <laughs> oh gosh. <laughs> My friend Lena, who I did the yoga teacher training with, wrote in a question. How long should you stay in Uti Pluti? Which there's a pose called Ut Plutihi, but she calls it Uti Pluti, and that's amazing. I love you and I miss you. Ten full breaths. It's ten breaths. That's how long you stay in that pose. How many teacher training courses have you done? I have done three. I am now certified with 600 hours of training. I would have been just fine doing two. I do not regret doing the all yoga teacher training, but I may have 
preferred to do a 300 hour because I knew a lot more than I thought I did, but it was still a fabulous training nonetheless. How was the vegan food in Bali and what is Bali Belly from? The vegan food in Bali was really good. I had the best vegan food in Seminyak and in Changu. There are vegan options on Limbangan, but not as many as I was hoping for, but I did. I mean, there were good options on Limbangan, but I only liked a few places. Bali Belly is like really gross. I, I'm pretty sure it's bacteria from the water. And yeah, if you haven't Googled it yet, just go ahead and Google it. <laughs> it's not good. I think I'm okay now. We're still working on getting my stomach um, back to normal. What was your favorite part about Bali? I'd say my favorite part about my trip to Bali was connecting with the locals and just seeing how other people live and communicating without words and creating just like loving relationships with people from different cultures and it was really beautiful. There was one woman in particular, Wyan, and she worked at the little convenience store near where I was staying on Limbangan and I would go there and buy my waters every day and we would have conversations without even using words from the same language and it just was so sweet because at the end, as we were leaving, our, our taxi stopped nearby her store and I was like, bye Wyan! And she ran across the street and was like, <laughs> please come back to Bali. And she was so sweet. And it was just, that was really special connecting with people and the anonymity, the anonymity, being in a place where nobody knows who you are. You don't know where you're going. Everything's new. You just feel like a kid again. It's so mm, inspiring and good. I want to know more about your energy healing done in Changu. Yes, I had an energy healing done in Changu and it was really interesting. I had a really good experience and then Laura had kind of a weird experience with him. So it just feels like nothing bad, 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 but just he was talking some weird things about things that she kind of threw her off a little bit. But my energy healing was really good and, and regardless of who said what or what happened, it did bring me a lot of clarity about things that I need to move through. And again, like I said before, it was just a really personal experience for me. I think it's just good to keep to myself. How do you feel being home? What has been the hardest part about leaving Bali? I feel good. Today I feel really good. The first week was really hard. I was really jet lagged. I had a really hard time getting back into my health and fitness and yoga routine. Teaching in the studio was totally cool. I, that felt really easy and natural to return back to, but my day-to-day -day life, I was like, huh, what do I do? What's my life about? What's my purpose? Why am I living here? <laughs> I was very confused about everything. And yeah, it was really weird being home. It was weird like talking to people, my phone ringing, and it was just like weird, I don't know. It was just really strange. It was like very strange. I feel a lot better now, but I'm still trying to get back into a healthy routine. And so, yeah, the hardest part about leaving Bali was like leaving paradise. <laughs> leaving, you know, a life where your day to day is spent on the beach barefoot, like not wearing shoes all day and just fully focusing on yourself. Whereas here, I think I'm a lot of things to a lot of different people. And so I have a lot more responsibility and more work and I'm so happy to be back now today. Like I feel like I'm getting readjusted and kind of getting back into my routine. But the main thing about feeling better about being home was finding my groove again, which I think maybe I'll make my next video about that. I kind of how to beat the post vacation blues and like how to get back into a routine because that's made me feel a hundred times better. I felt like absolute crap when I first got home and I think it was because I wasn't really doing the things or doing things that made me feel good. I was really jet lagged, staying up really late. I was not eating very well. I was like all over the place and now I feel so, so, so much better. What's the daily schedule like for yoga teacher training? I think I kind of touched on this earlier, so I feel like I already answered that question. I also did a day in the life vlog and I will link it below for you to see. That was like a Friday fun day, so that day was a little bit different, but yeah. 12 hour days, it's long. How are the other people in your training? Are you still friends? I had the most amazing group of people in my training. The teachers 
were so loving and so supportive and so available and so sweet and everyone in my training was amazing we still talk frequently on our group chat and it's so fun to stay connected with them on instagram and i feel like i made really good friends with everyone and yeah i got lucky with a really good group did anyone on the yoga teacher training have kids and did they bring them along to bali yes some people in my training did have children but they did not bring them along with them to the training i think it would be really difficult unless you had your spouse or some sort of help because you are in training for 12 hours a day and you only get one day off a week and it is a lot you have a lot of homework there's a lot of studying there's a lot of practicing and i think it would be best if you could do it during a time that you could really take the time to yourself but again if maybe your spouse or a parent or someone that could help you during the day um you could totally do that and maybe i don't know could be doable the thought of trying to take care of anyone while i was trying to do that training other than myself seems a little daunting if i'm gonna be honest <laughs> But you know, moms are superheroes. So you could probably handle it. Would you recommend traveling alone or with someone? I I basically traveled alone. Here's the thing. I knew Laura as an acquaintance before the training. And so I knew that she and I would be rooming together on the island. And I thought, oh, it'll be nice to have a buddy um, that I you know know from home on the training. We ended up becoming really, really good friends, which I'm so thankful for uh, throughout the training. So it was really nice to have someone to travel with, but I traveled there and traveled home alone and I could have totally done the whole thing alone. Laura made it better, but you could absolutely do it alone. What fitness level did you feel you needed for the training? I think that the teachers were very accommodating for if you didn't have a, an advanced yoga practice, but I do think that I felt like going in, I had a pretty strong yoga practice and a pretty high fitness level, and I was struggling. So I think, it's, I think it would be really helpful to have a really strong yoga practice, a daily yoga practice, five or six days a week. And I think having a pretty strong fitness level would be helpful as well. Again, 12 hour days, you aren't practicing the entire time, but you're putting a lot of stress on your body, you know? Not only physical stress, but also mental and emotional stress. And I think it's important to have a really strong body. But again, there were people there that didn't have a long or strong yoga practice physical practice and they did great and they progressed really well throughout the training. So I don't know. I think if you have the passion and you have the flexibility in your mind, you'll be good. At what age do you recommend to start with the course? I'm 19. Start now, girl. Start now. I did my first yoga teacher training in 2014. So that was five years ago. I was 25. I wish I would have started younger. As young as you can. If you're passionate about yoga and you want to learn more and or you're passionate about teaching, start as young as you can. Did you work during your training? I didn't work during my training. I didn't take on any collaborations for the whole month and it felt really good. I did create content and post on my Instagram and obviously created vlogs, but I'm passionate about doing that as well. It's not only my source of income, but it's something that I'm really passionate about and enjoy doing. So it was really fun to create without like an end goal. It was really fun to just create for the love of creating. And it was a really nice break. Did you miss Penny? Duh. Oh my gosh. Where is that girl? Of course I miss this girl. Look at this face. How could you not miss this girl? Oh, I missed her so much. And I miss my mom so much. And I'm so grateful that my mom watched Penny for me while I was gone because I felt like I could totally relax. I wasn't worried about Penny at all. I knew she was having so much fun with my mom in Orange County and there's so many beautiful parks. And my mom is so good to the dogs and she takes them to the park every day and loves on her. And I knew she was having the best time. It's so funny because when I went to go pick her up, I'm like, okay, let's go. And she was kind of looking at me like, I'm not going back to LA. I want to stay here with my grandma. <laughs> so yeah, I missed Penny a lot. Uh, and I'm happy to be home with her. 
If you have any more questions, please feel free to leave me a comment on this video down below in the comments, and I'm happy to answer them for you. Otherwise, this is officially ending Bali vibes on my YouTube channel for right now. <laughs> I'm so sad. It was so amazing and best time of my life. I feel like a different person and I feel like I let a lot of shit go on this trip and I feel like I healed a lot of parts of myself that I've been avoiding and yeah, travel will do that to you and Bali will do that to you. Thanks so much for watching, you guys. I really am so happy to be back. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up because that really supports my channel. I'm back to my regular uploading schedule up every Monday and Thursday. And I'll see you in my next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.